welcome back to the workshop. So in this video series uh, I thought I'd make a little bit more space underneath the chuck uh, and while I was there I may as well add an electric motor to help me lift the knee up and down. So in this episode we'll machine up the motor plate that mounts the motor and the drive mechanism then we'll also make a start on the test bench which has got all the electronics on it. Welcome to episode 41. Okay, so we're over at the CNC machine now and we're just in the process of setting up this part so we can machine up the main base. So I've gone ahead and machined this wooden part so it's reasonably flat and then clamp the part down to that. Uh, we'll start by internally machining some of those features there and that gives us some space to actually put some clamps on the inside. Then we can remove one or two of the outer ones and uh, start machining the outer profile. Uh, this is pretty free machining aluminium so it should be okay. It's not like the gummy stuff, you know, really thin stuff. Um, the cutter is getting a little bit old but hopefully it's okay, if not we'll swap it out for a new one. So let's get going. So because uh, I've only got one of these plates and it's quite expensive I decided to take the feed rates down so you can see I'm cutting pretty slow just to start with just to make sure it's going to cut okay. As I said the cutter is a little bit getting a bit blunt now so just took it nice and easy and then slowly ramped the feed rate up. Probably overdid it a little bit on the mist coolant but better that than have the tool clog and then break a tool or move the workpiece you know, and lose all your position. So here we are using an adaptive tool path to clean out the main bore. This is the one that will house uh, the bearing assembly. It's a pretty quick way to remove lots of material and then what I did here I just left a little bit of rough stock on the edge just so I could creep up on the final dimension to get a nice press fit. Okay, so I've just done a rough pass, then I've done a clean up to leave 0.05, and then did another clean up to leave 0.02. So this should be 56.98 or thereabouts uh, to give me a nice gentle press fit on a 57 uh, part that goes in there. And not really easy with calipers, but let's see if we're somewhere close and see if we need to dial it in a bit more. I think we're at 50, we're about there, aren't we? I don't quite see. Oh. I was just getting away the camera for a minute. <laughs> there. Yeah, I think I bumped it. But yeah, within 0 0.03. I think I just nudged it as I took it out. Right. Yeah, I think that's fine, so that'll give us a nice interference fit. Let's carry on with the rest of the machining. Quick double check, I haven't overcut it. Yeah, that'll go. And here we're doing the slots. These allow for the motor to be adjusted so you can adjust the belt tension. Now when I did the cam for this, uh, and the original drawing, I thought the bolts were 5mm, so I decided to use a 6mm end mill and just do a slot. Uh, turns out they're actually 4, uh, so yeah, it was a bit oversized really. I should have used a 3mm end mill and then just opened it out to maybe 45 Anyway, I did the slot at 6, 
and then because it wasn't a great fit I ended up uh, swapping the fixings out and tapping them to M5 in the motor so I could use um, M5 bolts and that fitted quite nicely. And here we're machining the big slot, this is where the motor pulley and the motor shaft will go. Again we're using an adaptive toolpath here, it's one of the most efficient ways of doing it. And then we left a little bit for a cleanup pass. Here we are just cutting out the outer profile. And then finally the finish pass. And after a bit of cleaning up, it looks like that. Yeah, so I'm pretty pleased with that. Uh, so what I've done is decided this will be the top. I know real reason just picked one and then I put a pretty heavy chamfer on there just use the deburring tool and made sure that was generously clear because um, we're gonna press that into there and I just want to make sure it doesn't get hung up on that shoulder because there will be a very tiny radius there from the cutting tool when we put this in the lathe so next job be to press that in there but we'll before we do that we'll just check the motor fits Uh, I've just offered up the motor and annoyingly there is a problem so I obviously didn't double check the diameter of that boss but as you can see it's so wide that um, for the channels that you need to machine down here to give it some slots to adjust it and they'd actually go into it so to show you what I mean as you can see that doesn't fit because it's being held off on that boss there which presumably has got a bearing in it for the output shaft which means you know one idea of just filing down these two edges here with two flats or machining them might not work we'll open it up in a minute and double check but not really sure how they intended you to use that because you can't make these slots any wider there'd be nothing left in the middle as it is they're pretty thin um, I guess one option would be to would that work? Countersinking there. Let's open this up and have a look and see if there is a bearing there. If there isn't, then great, but I suspect there will be. Okay, let's see what we've got. Put those in there so I don't lose them. See that gear, oh, gear's coming off. Uh, 
yeah, it's a bearing. Okay. Well, it's mostly off now. Let's see if we can take it all the way. Well, that was all. Little shafts falling out. Uh, no. Oh. I might. Do you know what? I'm. I'm going to put it back together. You can see the little worm gear down there at least. And a couple of different gears. It actually looks really nicely made. It's pretty good for the price. Alright, so that's not going to be an option. Let's see if we can get that back together. Oh, come on. Uh, I think one of the gears has moved. How do they get this together? a bit of clean up here it is so we've got those little three millimeter reliefs in there hopefully that'll be enough so let's see if it'll go now okay yep Oops. sitting nicely on those corner pads now okay let's see if I've left enough space Just like three pairs of hands. Is that going to work? Nope. Uh. Okay, so if we get that about centralized, then I can see that's going to work. It's hard to hold it in the camera so you can see, but yeah. I think that will do it. So after machining the main plate, I went ahead and pressed in the main housing that holds the bearings. Now I did think about warming up the main plate, but I could tell from a press fit and from the dimensions that I machined it to that it was going to go in okay on the press, so it's pretty straightforward. So here it is pressed home, so you can just see that's quite a nice tight fit against there. Pretty much flush with there. Our bearings inside. So I think while we're here, we'll just do a test assembly of uh, the pulley and the bearing. Uh, this should be a nice gentle. I should be able to assemble it by hand because I'll be able to maintain it. And I don't really want to press really hard trying to get this in and out. So I think a nice hand fit will be okay on that. So let's uh, offer that up next. So I'll put the uh, axial bearing on next. Looks like that. Take all the loads, but still be able to rotate. And then the main pulley with the extension shaft and the bolt hole pattern on there to take the ball nut to drive the ball screw up and down. So this should... Get it in straight. Should be able to push it in by hand. If not, it is it's going to be a very light fit, so I'll just press it. It just means I need to get something to hold the inner race on the press. Okay, nearly there. As you can see, there's a bit of a gap. Okay, oh, that's perfect. Nice. OK, 
Okay, there's a little close-up. Runs nicely on those bearings. And on there. And then there's room at the bottom there just to put the locking collar on. Put the grub screw in just in case this wants to pull out, but I don't think it will, but just a bit of a safety net there. Right, there we go. So for the side pieces, I just put them in the CNC machine and then brought them down to the required size. And then it's just a matter of boring a hole down the center. So the two of those, obviously, one on each side. So because I'm using some electronics here, I'm going to use a little microprocessor to control the whole thing. I wanted to be able to move the board inside in the house so I could put it into the computer and configure it there a lot easier than going to and fro between the house and the workshop. So I mounted it up on this scrap piece of wood here and then it was just a matter of bolting the whole assembly down onto that so we could trial fit the motors and get all the electronics working. So here it is on the fixture, so it spins nice and freely. We'll get the motor in. Um, then I remembered um, I need to modify this pulley. Uh, I thought I could use it as is, but uh, I just did a little dry fit there and I remembered I've got to machine this boss off because it's too tall, um, because it won't fit onto the shaft there and align the belt. And I've remembered now, my original plan was to machine that off and then I drill at least one set screw hole actually in the valley there between the teeth. So you'll just have that part there. And that works really well, as long as you can sink it well below where the belt goes, uh, that'll be no problem at all. So we'll need to do that little job, but before we do that, let's just um, mock it up and just show what it looks like. Now for the motor, I knew it was always going to be a bit tight, uh, sort of accessing the screws once the belt's in. Um, so I've got some custom hardware on order that's um, just like a, a hex head normal bolt. So I can get the spanner in from the side, but for now, I can just put in... Um, the two, two fixings at the rear which are easily accessible and then that should uh, give us an idea and make sure it's all going to go together okay. Okay I'm just using these uh, like penny washers for now and these hex head screws but I'll replace them with some hardware that's going to do the job a bit better. Also they're not really long enough, I need a few more threads but uh, they haven't arrived yet. Actually, I was just having another look at that and I remembered actually what my plan was, uh, was not to machine that off, um, but to reduce the diameter. So you can see that's quite large there. So if we turn that diameter down, still plenty left for the, the thread there for the set screw. And then that will, will sit inside that gap there. So it will be down a long way. It might take some off the um, length of it, but basically, yeah, that was the idea. So the boss would be inside there and then I'd machine this gap at the back, or this hole back here, and then should be able to get in there, probably take that connector off, and then uh, do up the set screw. Yeah, that was my plan. <laughs> okay, so I think the next thing to do is modify this pulley so it goes into there, and then we can see what we've got. Okay, that was a little bit fun on the lathe there, just trying to get that bore diameter reduced, and then the length reduced so it would sit nicely in there. Um, I machined up a mandrel, you know, a nut on the end of it in the usual way, but uh, it managed to gall up and uh, really struggled to get the mandrel off. Um, anyway, ended up drilling it out and then uh, just reaming this back to size. Um, so yeah, all good now, but a little bit of drama there. And then in terms of getting the um, Allen key in the end, just to get into the set screw onto there, it's going to be a bit tight. I've had to take the connector off there. Uh, I don't know if it's going to really quite go in there because it's coming up at a bit of an angle so what I might have to do is relieve this slot a little bit here at this end to allow it to tilt up a bit more just get in there that's one option or the other one is to um, reduce lower the screws down to move it down and then tighten it up into a known position or yeah get a nice position off there or measure that and uh, make sure it's set and then tighten it up that's a bit of a fiddle anyway I think the broad concept works so what I think we need to do now is uh, get the motor uh, harness plugged back in and uh, let's just give it a little test spin just by putting some voltage through the main power cables which on this one are red and black so let's just go and see what it runs like and uh, yeah let's give it a spin So I've just been looking through all my electronics boxes and I've got some spare switches there so we'll have a look and see if we can make use of those. We've got some limit stops there, 
Uh, I bought this especially for the projects. That's a motor driver and hopefully that will drive this motor here. So I think we can make use of this. Uh, it's a little kind of joystick in case you want to sort of go up and down with an analog. So we've got the different speed control. That's one option. Uh, microprocessor, so use the old Arduino again. And somewhere in here we've got potentiometer. Oh yeah, well I've got this option. Uh, this is a rotary encoder, so this can go around infinitely and then it sends pulses out. And I think this, oh yeah, it's also got a push button down. So that might be useful for setting a speed, but I think the potentiometer would be a bit easier. I just can't quite find it. It's in one of these boxes. Oh, I think it's in that one over there. Hold on. I think it's in here and with the resistors. Makes sense. Stay. Oh, there we go. That looks pretty ancient, doesn't it? But we'll just check that works and isn't too sort of noisy. I guess that's 10k. Oh, 100k. Oh, it doesn't matter. If that's a bit crunchy, maybe just get a new one. Uh, anyway, let's put all these bits down here and then uh, we need to see if we can get the motor running. Well, I just went to put power into it, into black and red. Uh, so this was a sort of a generic file I downloaded. Didn't come with the motor. And yeah, black and red are the motor and then the rest of the hall sensors for the pulses. So you've got two pulse train on this, so you've got quadrature and all the rest of that. Uh, but it didn't run, nothing at all. I'm red and black, and then I just put it across just in case <laughs> these are monitors or just slave ones. Put it across those again, nothing at all. A uh, bit confused when I had a look at the actual part I bought off eBay, and it did come with a spec, and that's here. And we all notice is they're very different. So <laughs> the motor power is the plus is red, but negative is white on the other end, and then the encoder ground is the black, and that is not what we've got on here on this generic one so hopefully I haven't done any damage I can't see that I would have I've just grounded through the encoder I haven't made a uh, complete circuit anywhere so I'll put it across red and white slowly turn up the voltage and hopefully it will move hmm. okay just make sure not current limiting now it's a 24 volt DC motor, but I guess it'll start moving lower than that. And there it goes. Oh, of course it's slipping, isn't it, on there? Well, I was getting a little bit fiddly to try and get the pulley on there and try and get the grub screw in. So I think until the proper hardware arrives and allows me to put this together properly, we'll just run it like this. I mean, clearly if that goes round and the belt goes round, then yeah, that's gonna spin. So we don't need to worry about that. So let's just have a look, another look at the electronics then. So what I'll do now, we'll just plug it in and even on very low voltage, it's still moving. You can stop it, but I mean, nothing there. And then we can ramp that up. Sounds a bit crunchy, doesn't it? I wonder if it needs some grease in the gearbox. It's 12 volts, take it all the way up, 24. Currently pulling that point one out. Oh, I can't really stop it. You can see the current going up there. All right. Basic test passed. It does sound a bit noisy though, doesn't it? Mm. So while we're over here, we'll have a look at the electronic side. So. I've gone a little bit more high tech than perhaps you really need. I'm going to go the microprocessor route. That just gives me lots of flexibility, you know, all the way up to and including canned drill cycle. So you could, in theory, program it uh, to move the knee up if you want to drill a hole with certain pack depths, all that kind of stuff if you want, or just use it for kind of on off speed up down. Um, it should be pretty straightforward to do as um, I'll just write some code to run on there. Uh, then, as you can see, I've got my limit stops here. These are Hall effect sensors. I'll just put the number or the type there. 
on the screen. These are some old ones I've had from CNC projects in the past and they just detect uh, when a metal object, particularly if it's iron, it will do an aluminium as well, uh, gets near. So this will be my top and bottom travel for the knee to make sure it doesn't crash into the end stops and that will feed into the microprocessor so it will know that it's near a limit and you can't go up any more and just slowly back away and then away you go. And then uh, the other thing we've got here is the uh, motor controller. I've not used this type before but it seems a pretty popular way to control motors like this. There's various ins and outs. I'm hoping the Arduino can control this and then this in turn will control uh, the motor itself down there. Okay so that's uh, L298N. And then what else we got? Then we got the option to run. I've got a little analog joystick so that little hat goes on top of it. So the you might want to just use this so the more you push it the faster it goes like that rather than it being just on off so that might be a way to control the up and down it's a bit fiddly not probably very nice to use you know it's not sort of industrial big joystick but yeah maybe that's an option or we've got a potentiometer just vary the speed old school into there we've also got a, this is a rotary encoder so this has got an infinite number of rotations and every time it goes around one of those little clicks it sends out a little pulse and uh, should be able to determine, um, yeah, you could set speeds, you could do this. It's a bit more complicated, but this could be a way to interface with it. And then it's got a little push button if there's another function you want to add. Various on-offs, push buttons here. I thought maybe these might look good for the uh, up and down, maybe like that. These are simple push buttons. That might be a way to go you know, down, up. Nice, chunky way to do that. And I've got a little emergency stop. Uh, so I bring those into frame. A whole load of options down there, different colours, whatever you want to do. So not quite decided. Depends on the functionality really, but we'll we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so that's the electronic side. So the plan is um I'll get it working on here because I can just pick this base up and um, plug because it'll have this on it, plug this into the computer in the house, get the software working, get the up down, put a you know, have this running basically on this little bench here put something metal near there make sure it realizes that and it doesn't allow the motor to go up and down essentially simulate it um, and then once it's all working we bring it out here and put it on the machine which hopefully should work straight away anyway that's the plan Okay, so some of the hardware has arrived that I wanted, so I've managed to mount the motor properly now and uh, I ended up making a little bit of a modification in the plate. Basically I machined out a little slot here and that just makes it much easier to assemble it all in you know, more logical order and you actually get to the grub screw, whereas before it was really awkward. So that's worked quite nicely. Uh, as you can see I've gone for this hex head star because it only just fits under here and then uh, to tighten it you can just about get the spanner under there and just tighten those. So the cap heads I had before were just a bit of a temporary measure, clearly never going to work. So very really pleased with that bit. Uh, it looks like it's going to line up quite nicely and then obviously uh, the ball nut goes onto there. That will be bolted on and then that will move the ball screw up and down. As yeah, so you can see down the front here, I've just gone ahead and made up this plate and I'm just working out where I want to put some of these buttons. So basically this will be a little test bench effectively and I'll be able to get it get it working just put this in the house uh, plug it into the computer flash the software tune the software and play with it and then oh yeah the other thing I did um, I bought this little breakout board and I bought a new Arduino because they're not that uh, expensive little nano and effectively it gives you screw terminal access to all the little functions the analog in the voltage and all the digital in some of these are PWM it's marked up on the board if it's got a squiggle on it it'll be uh Oh, they're not marked on these, okay. Um, yeah, but some of the boards have the squiggle marked, they're PWM. Um, then that's where we're going to flash the software. I'm not going to be using these ones at this end. I thought that would be a bit easier just to configure it, get it working, and then you can obviously screw that down. So I think I'm going to put that there, just so, and that one there, just conscious of the wiring and how it's all going to hopefully not get in each other's way. Uh, I've decided not to go with this little joystick thing. It's a bit... You know, it's not that industrial, is it? I mean, I'm not saying that these are super industrial. Um, I did see, I saw someone online made something, I guess, basically like a really chunky joystick with a really um, chunky main control shaft and a big red ball on the end, and it looked really 
you know, purposeful. So who knows? Maybe we'll go with that in the end. But for now, these oh, these little basic switches will uh, get me going. I think I was going to go with a little keypad as well. So I need to order a new one, new one of those. The little screen, so it'll all plug in and just need to work out what's going to go where. Okay, so I've just made up this little panel, marked out some holes and drilled those to the correct size so we can just put these sensors in temporarily, just make it a bit easier to get the whole thing set up. So this uh, furthest end, we've got these little proximity sensors. These will be my uh, up and down. Oh, I've done that wrong, haven't I? There we go. Somewhere in there. There we go. So this one's the inhibit. Okay, and then the emergency stop. Okay, so we've got our 5 volt and 24 volt inputs there. We've got our E stop, uh, variable speed. Uh, it's kind of an, an inhibit or enable button. So up and down, and then the two proximities. Um, I think I'm going to use one of those 5 pin keypads to interface with the Arduino, and there'll be an LCD display. So it shows you the speed that you've got set on here or anything else you want to show. Uh, and then with the 5. Um, keypad unit I'll be able to interface that I can have a little menu so you can change various parameters I mean the, th the thing is you know if you all you want to do is make that motor go up and down uh, you can just use a little motor controller like this um, feed it with you know do it all kind of analog style just feed it with some push buttons and it will just go up or down at the set speed you want nice thing about using the microcontroller though is um, I can add a whole load more functionality if I want you know, I could do can cycles for drilling, so I could move the knee sort of up in uh, small sort of pecs to a certain depth, then come back out if you want to drill a hole in a certain way, whatever. Um, just opens a bit more flexibility, and it makes it a lot easier to code things like um, for the end stops. Otherwise, you've got to, I guess, wire up relays and do it all kind of analog uh, with um, sensors and things like that. So, yeah, I'm just going to use the microprocessor. So let's, uh, uh, we'll screw that down there, we'll screw that one down there. And then we can start uh, wiring it up. Yeah, looks good so far. Okay, so as you can see, I've got all the sensors and buttons uh, mounted into this plate. Uh, the wiring is going to take quite a bit of time now, so I think what we'll do, we'll call the video there. Uh, if you've got any thoughts about, you know, extra functionality, now I've got a microprocessor running it with all these buttons, all the sort of things I might be able to do, you know, I'll consider it and maybe put that in the code, who knows. Um, certainly, obviously, going to do the up-down, speed control, the limits, and emergency stop. Uh, may do the inhibit one, I'll, I'll just have to think about that for safety. Uh, yeah, by all means, leave those uh, in the comments down below. If you're enjoying this series and you want to see how I get on with this, feel free to subscribe. And uh, with that said, see you next time.